Welcome to Health System CIO's interview with Caleb Harris, Research Director at CLASS. I'm Anthony Guerra, Founder and Editor-in-Chief. Caleb, thanks for joining me. Yeah, glad to be here, Anthony. Looking forward to the conversation. All right, great. Uh, I'm sure you guys do these reports. You put your heart and soul into them, and so it's probably fun to talk a little bit about them, right? You, yeah, you, definitely. You is put a time. lot into these things. Yeah, I'm we sure. do. It, it is. It is a it is a process, to say the least. Uh, <laughs> so hopefully, again, we're we're hopefully it's impactful for the for the market. All right, very good. So this one is Go Live Support 2024: Finding the Right Pipe Partner in a High Performing Market. Mm -hmm. um, very interesting topic. Um, you know, Go Live Support. So um, we're going to talk about that. So. If you want to just, I mean, everybody knows about class, but if you want to give me the, the quick overview of class and sort of your role there, we'll start there. Sure. Yeah. So class is again, mission driven um, in the sense, our objective is to help improve healthcare. And the way we go about that is talking directly to the end users and getting their direct anonymous feedback. I mean, sharing that, sharing that unfiltered feedback back to the market. Um, and so my role here is to, to work with firms in their respective segments and, and spaces where we're measuring, primarily the EHR and ERP implementation spaces. So that comprises of firms leading um, those respective implementations and or staffing, providing that go live activation support um, are the areas in which I'm responsible for um, from a class research perspective. Very good. Um, why this particular topic? Why did you guys decide to tackle this one? Sure. Yeah. So we decided to tackle this one because, uh, again, we're still seeing a fair amount of, of activations and, and go lives happening in the market. Um, and being able to share is this is a significant decision, right? And it's, it's also, it can be a very costly decision as well of saying, who should we engage? Who can help us as we have made this oftentimes a significant investment um, with a particular software um, and getting those lights turned on, that initial training and, and, and go live event um, can be very stressful. And which firms are, are going to perform this at a high level um, to be able to share that with the market. And again, help help health systems make an, an, um, a continued informed decision around, around the partnership um, with this particular engagement. What a you know we're talking about really with the big EHR vendors we're talking about Epic and and Oracle sure. slash Cerner and Meditech and that's pretty much where we are these days. Um, what what's the sentiment or the messaging from the vendors on a go live? Is it sort of yeah you absolutely need to engage someone to help you like we're going to do a part we're going to do our part but you need help or sure. is it we got this you and us together we got this we don't need anybody else. So I think that's really predicated on the size of of the of the health system, if you will, or or the mm -hmm. site in which this is happening. Um, from what we have seen, is this is something where generally bringing someone in is be, is beneficial, um, just because of the sheer volume of people required. And again, that's going to be predicated depending on the size of the organization, um, where this is happening. But generally, what we see is this is something that is having a firm brought in to have that support, because I think. Anything new, and especially if you've been doing something for 10 years the same way, having someone directly um, at the elbow to answer and address those questions um, can be very meaningful. So thus far, we see that pretty something that's very accepted, if you will, um, and not frowned upon and, and looking to bring other people in, especially when we're talking because there's a handful of things where we're talking over a thousand plus folks needed. Um, so just the sheer volume of people that are required often makes this a, a um, necessity. Is is there there's different types of consulting for these implementations, uh, and I'm sort of thinking through this, and you tell me um, what you've mentioned a few times is the user training. So training up the users on this new system so they know how to use it. They're not sitting there frustrated trying to figure out where to click. There's also a technical side for consulting on the implementation, right, where you're just making sure everything works and the infrastructure mm -hmm. and sort of. So there, those are two different things. Are those two different firms? Usually we're talking. Yeah. yeah, it can be. So we, we can see at times where there's a firm that can lead more of the technical component of the implementation. Um, oftentimes we see that those are two separate firms, um, but there uh -huh. are some times where they lead from the start of the engagement till go live. Um, generally, they're going to potentially still be there as well to help making sure that goes well. And then having a group specifically focused on the activation of the go live of that of that event. Um, so oftentimes we see that separated, but there it is feasible to have someone um, 
and be able to do both is, is what we've seen. Not as common, um, but that is something that is feasible. We don't see a lot of firms that are leading that implementation of it. Not all offer that go live support, um, but it definitely can't be feasible. Okay, very good. All right, so um, one of the things you mentioned in the report is that clients are starting to expect more customized as execution rather than a traditional standard consulting approach. So tell me a little bit about what you mean by that when you say more customized execution. Sure, so what we mean by that really is making sure that these the firms brought in understand the organization, um, what are some of the key challenges, what are things that are important to them, and making sure they have the appropriate resources um, to address those questions and as their specific modules and things they're going live with. Um, that they have that understanding of the organization versus just bringing in, for lack of a better phrase, a warm body of saying, hey, this is what we're doing. So having that being very customized to the organization and what those needs are. But I will say it's also prudent for the organization to also give runway while the, the actual event are generally between two to four weeks. Um, but having some months in advance, I would say is also meaningful to bring in the firm, talk through, say, this is what the onboarding process is going to like. What is that as far as if we have to, if there are resources that don't work out, what is our process to get that exchange and really having a systematic plan, um, several months in advance to ensure they put themselves in the best position to be successful. So I think that's a that's a two-way street, if you will, um, not just reliant fully on the firm, but also um, on the organization, making sure that they're working cohesively together and have a systematic approach to make sure, um, again, they, they can best position themselves to, to have a successful engagement. So it sounds like, uh, you know, you want to be very, very careful with the selection of this company that you're going to bring in um, and that these companies, and you tell me if I'm wrong, these companies are very specific in where their strengths lie with a particular vendor, right? Some of them aren't going to specialize mm -hmm. in all three in Meditech, Epic, and Cerner. Some sure. of them may prefer one. Some, And then they can also specify based on size, right? Not every firm is going to be able to help a 10 hospital system. They may specialize in helping two hospital systems and you can go by beds or, but generally size can be an issue. So you might have an organization that focuses on particular vendors and a particular size of health system that they can help. You want to be very, very careful when you're making your selection to pick a vendor that lines up with what you need. And as you said, you want to mm -hmm. take a lot of time to have discussions. So that seems to be a sentiment here, right? right. Take it slow yeah. and be deliberate. Go ahead. And be deliberate and specific because we, we do hear times where, and this is where it can't be challenging if it's just trying to get those number of, of people um, in a short period of time can be, again, very challenging. Uh, and then also selecting a firm that has the validations and experience to derive a successful implementation. And well, and I think this is more market um, driven is majority of, of what we're seeing of these activation events are really epic engagements is what we're seeing. Um, not all, but I would say, and again, unsurprisingly, a lot of that is driven based off some of the ep epic um conversions is, is what we're seeing. Right. So if you are doing Epic, which a lot of people are, sure. um, you have to understand that there's significant competition for high level Epic resources, Correct. which means don't make a call and expect the, the army to come next week, Correct. right? Because they're being utilized. So it's Correct. almost like a really good contractor who's remodeling kitchens, right? He's going to, uh, someone who's really good Correct. is going to say, well, I'm booked out six months. So I can put you on the schedule, but don't I can't come next week. It's the same thing with these resources, right? Correct. Correct. That's that's an excellent example. Um, and the other part too is, and this is where it goes into also connecting with the software um, vendors, is getting an understanding of who else is going live. As you understand, there's a finite number of resources in the market. So understanding how many how many organizations are going live at this at this time period how many refuel engagements or or things that are happening as well so that way you can really have an understanding of what is the pool of resources what does that look like is is that going to be um widely available or is there some uh, shortage if you will at some capacity depending on the current market events of, as as who may be going live right cuz you you know you could almost picture a discussion that says listen with 
the vendor says, listen, I could send you my B team next week, but if you want the A team, it's going to be three months. Sure. Yeah. And, right? and that's where I think having those conversations and, and that's why it's also very, again, beneficial having this being very thought out and, and giving time that we're not asking, Hey, I need a hundred, 200 plus resources tomorrow. While we've seen that happen, that leads to, to, to greater variability, if you will, in the experience. Um, and so that's why having that level of engagement months in advance will again, put you in a better spot to, yeah. to reduce hopefully the level. I mean, these go live events are stressful. They're high, right? High intensity. How can we reduce that um, as much as we possibly can to make it a more streamlined and smooth experience for for the end user? Yeah, you're you're cracking me up with your phrase "greater," because you didn't want to say it in a bad way. You said "greater vari variability in the experience." <laughs> <laughs> when you, so when you have a really bad install, you can say, "Listen, we had some greater variability in our yeah." <laughs> hey, we just we're just I trying like to help it. the people, Anthony. That's what we're I love it. <laughs> I love it. No, and it's great. Um, and I'm assuming these costs differ uh, based mm -hmm. on the quality of the resource. So a consultant is not a consultant is not a, and I don't know how this works, but so for a big consulting firm, are they going to vary? And you may not know, but you might, they, are they going to vary the price per consultant? So this resource, this individual based on his or her experience costs this much per hour. Sure. Good Jimmy question. at a, Jimmy at a college is going to cost you a quarter of that. Now, Jimmy, sure. He's still nice and he's going to show up, but anyway, go ahead. So that would be one where we don't get into the yeah. granularity as far as from a cost structure mm -hmm. um, at a high level. Uh, again, this is, I think, size of the organization. If I have a hundred person go live versus a 500 plus person go live. So it's really going to, I don't know. Oftentimes it's going to be more of a, a, a general rate is from what I understand. So don't quote me exactly on that. So I don't know if it goes as granular as to individual resources, if you will, if there's some level of specialty, um, right? Um, that's where I think there may be some flex there. Um, but from a contracting perspective, we don't get into the nitty gritty yeah. as far as from a cost perspective. Um, but generally, from what I understand, there's more of a, a generalized rate yeah. for, for the particular resources. Right. Uh, no problem with that. Um, let's talk about this this thing that happens. And, and I think this is a huge part of a positive consulting engagement. Sometimes you have, and you you mentioned this in your report about resources being swapped out. Sure. If, the, if the customer is unhappy and it could be because they don't have the experience that was hoped for, they don't seem to have the knowledge. It could be just a personality conflict, mm -hmm. I suppose. Like we're just not jiving, um, yeah. could be many things. So this is a very interesting but common dynamic in consulting engagements. Can you talk a little bit about this? And I'm sure, I think in your report, you indicate that some, and we don't have to get into the companies, sure. but some are more receptive to, or better, or more responsive to swapping out consultants. Like, okay, no problem, we'll send you someone else. Tell me a little bit about that dynamic. Sure. So one, I think it's, and I believe most organizations are aware of this, when we're talking about bringing in hundred plus people, um, oftentimes there is going to be a resource that doesn't pan out. So I think having an understanding of just the nature of these organizations, it's very rare that you're going to get a hundred percent hit rate. Um, and so I think that's the other part of, from a planning perspective is having a solidified plan and approach for when that instance of that likely likelihood of that instance occurring is we know what what that process is and uh -huh. how to navigate and adjust that. Right. Is what I would say is a key factor to that. Um, and, and making sure also from a, who do we have on the bench? What, what, what does that mean? So if I have to replace somebody, what's the timeline and being able to switch that person out, I would say majority of, if not all of the firms that, that we have measured in this respective report, um, do that very well. Um, but again, they're just making sure what are the conversations being very intentional with making sure, Hey, when this, when this happens, what is our process of going through and replacing that particular person? I think that the real pain point is this, if there's someone in, whether it's the project manager, there's more of a leadership component to that. And if that person has to be um, changed out is where I think there's more of a significant pain point as there's certain knowledge and things of there that uh, as they've been on the project that can cause some more there's more implications, if you will, versus if I had someone at the elbow 
um, general resource compared to someone in leadership is, is what I would say. So um, those contingency plans are, are critical to making sure that you're successful there. Uh, absolutely. And that touches on the scarcity of resources in the market. So if, if, if the leader of the project, you guys aren't jiving, you're not able to get along and you want to switch them out, there might, may not be anybody on the bench at that level at this mm -hmm. time. So that could be part of a conversation. Sure. That'd be part of the conversation. And that's where I also say from just the executive leadership teams, if you will. Um, and we we hear that being able to step in and and have conversations and be aware of what are the pain points, where are things going well, um, and leading those discussions to alleviate any potential challenge um, in those scenarios. I'm going to mention a few things, and you just touch on what you want to touch on here. I just made notes as yeah. I was looking through the report. Um, people, obviously, a positive is a really strong methodology. Mm -hmm. um, to, to know what they're doing. Um, the dealing dealing with unexpected issues in a positive way, sure. proactive communication as opposed to reactive, um, executive engagement. Uh, when things are bad is when there's confusion and things are chaotic and things are unanticipated. So, I mean, what, what do you want to talk about with those points? So I would say the uh, unanticipated events and with this is just, and I think that correlates to um, also community like being proactive versus reactionary. And reason being is, is with these events, there's a lot of moving parts. And so, and this going back to our, to a systematic approach is no one likes to be surprised, right? Especially if it's a bit like, especially if it's a bad surprise yeah. <laughs> with that and bad information. So how, and oftentimes when, when a firm is able to get ahead of that or, or notify them and communicate that um, in a timely fashion, that again, I think alleviates some of the stress of saying, I've now partnered with someone that's that's aware of this, that's keeping me in the loop. They have a system, right? They have a plan in how we're going to tackle this. Also looking at potential potholes down the road that you can then uh, navigate and say, again, this is what we're seeing this is how we're going to rectify this and adjust for this expected event um, are things that I think are, are critical um, because as you know, there could be a very small thing, but if not communicated, mm -hmm. all of a sudden surprises someone, the level of stress in these events can turn into a much bigger challenge and issue um, than if it was properly communicated first. So th that would be the one. And I think, again, that goes down to project leadership, what's happening there. Also kind of re reiterating the point of our proper planning in advance and, mm -hmm. and most for and having that level of contingency planning of thinking what can go wrong how will we address that and making sure that those things are are properly addressed as much as we can there's always some level of unexpected um thing but having a roadmap i think again best positions them to to best navigate those those unexpected challenges yeah i'm i'm sort of laughing to myself here because uh, if there are unexpected issues and confusion and chaos, I could have done that myself. I, sure. didn't, <laughs> I didn't. I didn't need to. You're here sure. to avoid that. So if you're not helping me, what are you doing? Anyways, yeah, exactly, <laughs> exactly. And that's why I think again, those ones where what can we control? What variables can we control? Are we doing everything we can to make sure that's ready to go. Because um, there, I was actually went to a go live. Uh, just from an anonymity standpoint, I can't say what what organization I traveled out to or who the firm was, but went out and it was it actually ended early um, than what was initially scheduled, really because of um how seamless the project was and, mm -hmm. and understanding, hey, these are this is what our objectives are, this is what we're doing. Um they were able to downsize, reduce the number of resources, I should say, um, because of how smoothly the project went. So um not every project is the same and not every project's going to go that smooth sailing. But that's where again making sure that we understand what the variables are, what challenges can we anticipate, um, and how will we navigate that are, are key aspects. And that's where I think it's not just the firm, if you will, but also the provider organization working in unison to ensure that they are on the same page. Um, and there's a level of partnership there um, to, to best address these um, these engagements. Yeah, so it sounds to me like a few of the takeaways here are Take your time, have a nice timeline on this so you don't have to rush. 
probably get references and make sure mm -hmm. the entity has done the specific type yeah. of project that you want for a specific for the organization yeah. this for the size that you are yep um get those references um and then do your part right because yeah. because the health system is always going to have a lot of work to do now i'm sure the companies that are thought of highly in this area do as take as much as possible off the plate of the health system right. but there are going to be things they can't be successful they probably need the health system to do certain things so do your part mm -hmm. these sound to me like some some takeaways but i'm going to leave you uh with the last word and get your final best piece of advice for folks out there that are that are considering and about to hit yeah. the market for help in this area yeah so um one big thing is i i would say first and foremost to your point there anthony of what software system I'm, am I implementing? Does this, do the firms in which I'm I'm engaging have experience in there? Also experience with size and scope of with my organization are critical. I think just kind of universal things that you need to make sure you're aware of. The other more, I think, adjacent things to be thinking of is what else is happening in the market? Mm. Are there organizations? What are their size and scopes of those projects that I need to be aware of um, as I will be competing for similar resources? Um, is, is a big part that I would say being aware of. And then also making sure that you have the appropriate engagement from your leadership team at, at the organization. Is everyone bought in? Is everyone aware of what we're doing? And making sure we're taking the appropriate time to plan for this event versus having it rushed and trying to get folks right a week before it, it goes. Because there's a lot of logistical challenges there as well. So mm. those are, I think, the core things where it sounds very basic, um, and, and very straightforward, but it oftentimes get lost in the shuffle when we're doing a type of implementation. But but making sure that contingency planning and upfront road mapping is is done well in advance. Yeah, and just uh, one more thing, and is do you need to make sure you sort of interview and click with whoever's going to lead that on on the vendor yeah. so on the the firm side so yeah. i want to meet the person i want to make sure we're we understand each other and feel good about that now people can always leave jobs right that individual yeah. could leave after a month in the middle you can't prevent that but that relationship has got to work well your thoughts right. yeah I, I agreed so okay. i think that, and this is uh you want to make sure that only and this is just more anecdotal information just some class, just data holistically when it comes to replacements, for lack of a better term there, that's roughly about 50-50, um, whether it's a technical miss versus and a cultural miss. And so making sure that you vibe with the person, have an understanding that communication piece, I think is critical um, in understanding and, and driving a successful goal. Life. Awesome, Caleb. That was wonderful. I want to thank you so much for your time today. Hey, I appreciate it. Thank you, Anthony. Have a great rest of your day.